Yo, what's up? This is your boy Postman, and you're tuned into Post and a Diary. And welcome to Post and a Diary. And as you may know, every day is a good day to get in delivery from the Postman. And of course, if this is your very first time tuning in, please kindly like, share, subscribe, comment, do whatever is necessary to engage with the content, and most importantly, enjoy the review. One of the finest talents from Soweto, Saudi, is back again with a brand new project in its title, Msodra Don't Die. Now, of course, before I get into the review itself, I would like to actually get deep into some of the things concerning Saudi that I think you should know about in case you don't even know who Saudi is. Now, Saudi is a man that has contributed towards the success of South African hip-hop for the most part. And he's also a man that has been a part of South Africa's historical or some of South African hip-hop's historical moments, such as the time where he was featured on the Black Panther album. He was featured on a song called X alongside Kendrick Lamar, Schoolboy Q, as well as 2 Chains. And on that song, he was able to dominate the likes of 2 Chains as well as Schoolboy Q and Kendrick Lamar himself because the man actually had the best verse on that song to be fair and speaking of best verses Saudi would then also have the best verse on the song Vora featuring Java and Vora is obviously a song by DJ CD Lights that featured Java as well as South and of course Saudi dominated that joint and called it a day this is also the same guy that continues to raise the Soweton flag really high and he also has a tattoo of his hometown I don't even think it's a town, really. I don't even think we have towns in Soweto, but Snawane is the tattoo he has on his body. He has a lot of tattoos, but one of the prominent tattoos on his body is the one Snawane. So Snawane is where he comes from in Soweto. Snawane is around Piri Tamimi, Shawelo. If you know those parts, it's just around there. So if you know those parts, then you should be aware of where Snawane is situated in Soweto. This time around, he titled the project, obviously, in Satra Don't Die, because he wants it to be clear, Uguti, and he wants Soweto to exist forever. But also, I think for me, Saudi has been one of those guys that have been proud enough to or fully represent where they're from because you have the likes of Tato Sol and 25K representing the side of Pidori. And then you have the likes of Youngster CPT, of course, Repain, Cape Town, Weinberg, to be specific. Saudi also comes from a really hectic, lengthy hiatus. And he just resumed his musical career when he returned back to the fold with the project Southside that he did with Mash Beats. And of course, I did review that project. So if you don't mind, please kindly check out that project as well. And since then, he's then been involved in a string of singles. He's been involved on All of Me, which is on Java's album that's currently out now called Isibogo, as well as 90s Baby, which is a song by Lunatic Beats. And that very song is a song that I actually like. I think I've spoken about it so many times. And Sotra Don't Die is obviously his sophomore project, his second project to be specific. It comes after the release of Drugs Inc., which came around 2017. Now, Msocha Don't Die is obviously a project that has one feature, and that one feature is obviously MT. But then on the other hand, it is obviously star started with superstar producers like Mesh Beats, Raf, Lunatic Beats, Wave Ambient, Lula Mamshaba, just to name a few. And the project has around 18 tracks in total and a runtime that is just above the hour mark. He starts us off with this very much ATM influenced track titled Father's Day, where he talks about not being able to lose because God is able to hear his mother's prayers. But then at the same time, it becomes an emotional song because it also lets us into how he was forced into becoming a man way quicker than expected. It's also a depiction of what his family dynamic currently looks like. Saudi then writes a song about his ex on I Still Love You. And like any other guy that's still hung over the ex, he says she will never find somebody that's like him. And on this one, I couldn't really hear him that much. Pretty much making it easier for anyone to be able to like misquote him. Over a trap beat graced with horns, Saudi then makes it clear that he does not belong in any of these celebrity circles. And I mean, we are people from the outside and we've just heard so many stories of how the industry in itself is just weird and Saudi just makes it clear that he does not want any part of that he does not belong in any of that but all he wants is his flowers where he can still see them and smell them and the tone throughout the song roses for me is rather like sparkling and the sparkling effect would then transcend into Amalunde. And Amalunde is obviously a track produced by Lunatic Beats alongside Christa. And according to Saudi, this is the first time he does 
a dust track or on such a beat or on a beat with a lock drum because he's never done something like this and he just calls a song for the streets it's a song that people from Soweto would essentially love and at this point I'm just quoting what Saudi said on a recent interview that he did earlier this month he's just painting a picture of how a couple just goes away for like a weekend but then before yeah so basically the dolly was just picked up one Friday and then over to you know to look man so on one Monday so basically this is just a song about sleeping out to me I'm sorry it sounded like a breakup song because Sally then makes it clear that his heart is not something to be played with now on the song and Gala Night the song Gala was also amongst the lead up singles or the singles that came leading up to the release of this big project so now this is a, an okay song, to be quite honest. It features MT. It didn't have really much for me. Unlike the 48 Yeezy song, which had like two parts, and Saudi was just totally floating on that one. And I think the humming and the ad libs, the ad libs just sounded super Travis Scott like. And you can also hear the hubby being pulled on that really song. But he says you must just watch how you approach him because he yeah, when you choose a learner, so one mistake, but so you'll get her. I don't know even how to explain that to someone who doesn't know what I just said. But what that means is if you just don't approach Saudi with caution, yeah, it's just gonna, you know, you'll switch your eye type B. Just move correctly around Saudi if you don't want the smoke type thing. I feel the, the second part of 40 Lazy should have been totally longer because for me, he had a really different approach out there, especially when that beat switch kind of came on. And he channeled some fast rapping, which made the song super, super engaging. And yeah, man, I think I like that song so much. Uri Iglesi was trapping. But as the project progresses, you then realize that Saudi continues to pour out his heart on certain songs. He's really vulnerable. He's really like introspective, really open at the same time because he did the very really same thing that I'm talking about right now on the song Camellia's Baby. Now, this is a song where he's just asking for prayers because he actually feels like the devil has been consistently applying pressure on him. So he just wants to be freed from that. But also, this is a song where he just had the guts to let his listeners or his fans into some of the things that have been taking place in his life or the events that have been taking place in his life, like his mother being handed 15 years in prison. And the song for me has like natural sounds, which just gives the song ambience to a certain degree because even the the approach he channeled out there was not really as somber as you would expect a song that talks about so introspective or detailed things to be. He was not really as somber as said. You can also kind of sense, I might be incorrect obviously, but this is a song where you feel like he made it while he was going through the emotions or he wrote it while he was just going through the emotions in real time similar to loyal now this is a song that has snail loops he also touches on how he feels as if his ancestors are really proud of him but then at the same time he then pledges his loyalty to someone and he says they'll just never desert this person this song is really easy on the ear the tune itself just oozes of relatability especially if you do have a significant partner like myself, yes, Dutch Um Yeah, but yeah, it's just me telling you guys. But yeah, so I just relate to the song, uh, the loyal, because yes, man, I think in real life, you just need to be loyal. Still on that note, you then hear him actually giving his purest intentions to this Han. So he's basically like recruiting this Han, in a sense, you know, in a cute manner, in a cute manner, you know, just telling her how he feels, just laying out his intention. But for me, this song just felt like a filler. I think the project would have done without this really song at the same time. I don't think the song really needed to be there. And I don't even think if the song was not there, anything would have changed. This is one of those songs that I would have probably trimmed out. Bolo Tiki on the other hand, percussion elements that take center stage where Saudi also channel a Nigerian accent. And he mentions that yeah, now he has no politics. All he wants to do is just chop his youth, enjoy his youth, and just enjoy life. And I think the song is really good. Ian Bezi is in the same wavelength as Bolo Tiki, but then the essence of vulnerability then makes way back into this project through the song trauma now this is a song where saudi talks about how or he makes use of emotive language to express how he feels about the loss that he suffered in recent times 
but also he then addresses how he feels like unemployment has actually taken a toll on his people, especially the people that he represents, the people from Soweto. I think it's pretty clear that various topics were covered throughout this project. There's just a lot of themes covered on this project, to be fair. But the one that caught my attention has to be the one me had jealousy, you know, on the song Kual. I think the song Kual for me sounded like it had an animated sample from a baby caught mobile as well as these 808s this for me is the best song to be quite honest this is the best song on the project i like everything that he did out there he has a lot of resonance and he sounds really chill it's pretty much relatable because we all know people who are like bench players but at the same time they just talk like born they just you know full-time players the game starters the downside of this project has to be that choose up as well as Long gay are skips for me. I don't think they did anything for me. I don't think they did anything for me, to be quite honest. Before the end of this project, or before the project draws to an end, there's a song that he did. The song has like a tropical feel that is obviously brought by these percussion elements and also the that Jamaican tune that he had out there. And simply put, this is a song where he just has. A sick the moment of I told you so, who's laughing now? And this is a song where he's just addressing the people who just didn't really believe him. So he's just basically saying to them, Yeah, he didn't believe in me, who's laughing now? And then Saudi would then end this big project with the song Prayer. The song Prayer for me sounded really, really again introspective. And this is a song where he just sheds light into how he feels as if God has forgiven him for all his transgressions. And in the same breath, he then addresses the fact that he was once asked to go to rehab by his mother, but then he didn't want to go. But then the bright side of all, of it all is that he seems like he found a refuge in the word of God. And for me, this has to be the most heartfelt album of 2023. I actually love everything about this body of work. He just actually took us through everything that he went through. He took us through what was happening in his life. He took us through his feelings and everything, man. But then at the same time, you know me, I just don't like long projects. I think 18 Chats was just too much, to be quite honest. And there are also certain songs that we just feel like, ah, dog, there's songs here that were not really needed, to be fair. Because if the song is there, it probably reiterates what has already been said. And yeah, for me, that also may have messed up the fluidity of the project. But it's pretty much clear that Saudi does know how to pin an entire story in an album format. He knows how to break a story down. The favorable moments were pretty much spaced out evenly so that you guys could also like listen to the parts that he felt like you guys should listen to apart from the vibing and yeah, whatever it is that you wanted from Saudi, he gave you those vibes as well. Hello to Saudi for, for this project. I really love it. It's a heartfelt project to be fair. And I think this project deserves an eight out of 10 to be quite honest. And I think this is a project that should be in that album of the year conversation, at least for you guys. But for me, post on a diary room, please kindly like, share, subscribe, comment, do whatever is necessary to engage with the content. And most importantly, I will see you on the next